From the beauty of the low country to the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. One of South Carolina's best kept secrets, Brook Green Gardens, is opening its doors to the upstate. Founded in 1931 by Anna Hyatt, a prolific sculptor, and her husband Archer Huntington, a patron of the arts, Brook Green is a world class showcase of art and nature. The legacy of the Huntingtons, of course, is Brook Green Gardens, uh, which is the first public sculpture garden in America. It is also the model for any sculpture garden that you, you might visit today in this country. This is the grandmother here in South Carolina. And our collection is considered the finest of its type in the world. The collection is, uh, is about 1,200 pieces. Uh, we have about 550 pieces in the garden itself, so they're integrated with all the horticultural aspects of Brook Green Gardens. Uh, the acreage, overall Brook Green is about 9,000 acres. Uh, the garden itself, the formal part, is about 30 acres. Uh, we continue to expand the parameters where our visitors can go because we feel with the increasing level of attendance, we owe it to our visitors to be able to see more and more Brooklyn Gardens. I think what makes Brooklyn Gardens such a unique place is the fact that it is one of the two institutions in the whole country that is a National Historic Landmark. It's accredited by the American Association of Museums as well as the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. So you have a combination of uh, a beautiful outdoor museum and a zoo so that people can come and look at the animals. And we also have a wonderful history interpretive center uh, that goes throughout the whole 9,000 acres that Brook Green encompasses. Brook Green carefully selected 20 works. All shapes and sizes representing a broad range of world-renowned sculptors for an upstate debut at Converse, Wofford, and the Chapman Cultural Center. From the delicate scale of Wombly to the almost life-size made for each other. One of the pieces in particular is entitled Wombly, and it's a bust of an Indian child done around 1902 by Adolph Alexander Weinman. This is one of the more important pieces in the collection, it, even though it's quite small. Uh, it's a piece that had been on view in the author Center. And it depicts a child that was actually in one of the uh, Wild West shows in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. In selecting the works that are going to Spartanburg, we had to choose carefully. And we also wanted to make sure that it was uh, included work that was very significant and, if we could, that would have some type of connection with Spartanburg. Uh, for that uh, reason, we included a piece by Richard McDermott Miller. There is a very nice uh, large sculpture by Miller in uh, a park in Spartanburg. Miller's exuberance dominates Spartanburg's Barnett Park and his powerful sculpture of artist Mary Cassette Outside the Art Museum at Converse College, document his close relationship with Brook Green and the Upstate. The internationally known sculptor, represented in distinguished museums throughout the country, left Brook Green a vast collection of more than 400 works. Works now on display in the Offner Center, a unique physical storage facility of small and large works made possible by Upstate patrons. Somebody mentioned having a permanent repository where actually guests could come in and look at the things that weren't on display but were in storage. It was something that George and I got very excited about. And because we had the opportunity to name it, it gave us great pleasure to name it after Elliot and Rosemary Offner because they are a special couple and have been special to South Carolina and the upstate as well as to Brooklyn. We've got all these things in storage. What if some of these pieces could be brought to the upstate 
and spread out so that people could actually see some of the work that's in Brook Green, even though they may never go to the coast. They may stay in the upstate all their lives. There would still be pieces from Brook Green that were portable that could come and join us. We wondered whether it wasn't a good idea to um, create, in effect, a Brook Green North, uh, create a place where some of those treasures might be lent, and thereby uh, allowing people in our community to have a better perspective of the value of these pieces of property, but also uh, to allow Brook Green to have more publicity up in this uh, part of the state. Uh, maybe that will uh, create a win-win situation for both us, because it advances our love for the arts, and for them, because it gives more publicity to exactly what a terrific place uh, it is. Thank you.